all right, hello, and welcome back to my tools tutorial in Unity. Today, we are going to be doing uh, Interrupted by Train featuring brushes. Because I've got to do this in one go, because I've got a train in 50 minutes, and I'm hopped up on caffeine on four hours sleep. All right, so brushes, you say. What kind of brushes? Uh, first off, we've got uh, square brushes. or well, we've not, because it has to compile again. Uh, so let's just show you that blue tile, uh, paint square. See, we've got a brush size of six, so if we just go here, we'll see that we paint a nice blue square at the cursor. Uh, so yeah, so if we click here, you'll see it gives us a six by six grid of uh, squares, but we can also do circles, thanks to the amazing powers of technology. So if we click here, uh, I know that doesn't look like a fucking circle, but it's a bit... Uh, because you're drawing it in squares, and yeah, so that looks more like a circle, and we can go bigger, and we can even have partial circles, like even if you go over the edge, it doesn't really matter, see, circle. Uh, we've also got spray cans, so we can spray paint, and you can be like your favourite graffiti artist. Uh, I'll have to reduce the size of that a bit. Yeah, see, spray can. Don't need friendless. Okay, so how do we do that, you ask? Well, uh, first off is a quick change I made to the uh, calculating of where the mouse, uh, the index is for selection, uh, just to stop an error. Uh, basically, instead of uh, casting as an int, we're using mathf.roundwint in this calculate chunk mouse is over. Uh, this just stops uh, an out of range error because it was trying to, it moved to the next chunk, but uh, sort of, the mouse was select. Uh, sorry, mouse select the uh, when you were moving the mouse around, it would move to the next chunk over, but it'd still be trying to get the last element from the previous chunk, and that was getting an out of range exception, which was not fun. So we used math.roundwint, and everything works hunky dory now. Uh, so what else should I say? So we've got a couple of new variables now. Uh, first off, we've got a boolean no. Uh, I'm the right one. Yes. No, I'm not. Sorry. Mouse All right. So this is what this is. The, these are the new variables. First off, we've got a uh, paint square, paint circle, and spray can, which are just used for selecting which option you want to do. Uh, we have an integer, which is the brush side, which is the, both the width and height of the uh, brush. If it's a square brush, or that will be the radius of the circle. If you are doing that's, it might be the radius divided by half, I'm not sure, but whatever. So that'd be like the radius or the width of the brush that you are painting with. And the spray can density is a number between 1 and 100. Uh, that basically is just the percentage chance of any one tile within the brush being painted. Okay, and if we go down to the map here, actually I've got, I'll return to the gizmos later. Well, actually, no, I can do them now. Uh, basically, what on draw gizmos is, is you see the little uh, blue square that's being drawn, uh, just to designate where we want pixels to be drawn. And that is uh, a gizmo. Uh, Unity has them as well. I think like you see that little camera icon and whatnot. And yeah. So we are using that just to draw like an area of where we are actually painting. Uh, basically, one this it doesn't actually have two D gizmos, so I have to use three D ones. But since it's two D perspective, you can't really see that the three D so whatever. Uh, so basically, we've got two. Uh, if we're either painting a square or a spray can, we use uh, gizmos dot draw wire cube, and that basically just takes two vector threes, which are a sensor position and size, and that will draw the box. And by say setting the color here, it will draw it them as blue. But we can draw them like any color you want. And if we are drawing a circle, we uh, draw a wire sphere. We use draw wire sphere. And this also takes uh, a vector three for the center position, which will be just be the mouse position. Uh, since it's 3D, you will have to put a uh, minus one uh, for. Well, I put minus one for the Z coordinate because. I think the camera sits at minus 10 as a default. So if you move it back minus one, it'll be slightly closer towards the camera than the uh, tiles. So you'll be able to see the wire sphere or cube. 
And it also takes a radius. Uh, yeah. So the brush size is like uh, radius times two. So we need to divide that by two. Uh, yeah, which is probably a diagram for explaining the radius, but whatever. Uh, you get the radius, you probably done maths or something. I sure know I did. No, <laughs> I'm not going to mention what I got for my maths grades, but whatever. Okay. So now onto the painting. Uh, we've got three new methods. So basically, the selection is done on here if we should be paint tile. So if paint square is true, we call paint this method called paint square area. If paint circle is true, we do paint circle area. And if spray can is true, we do paint spray can. Otherwise, we just default to the uh, original paint one tile at a time method or code that we had from before. Now, uh, where is it? Uh, down. All right, paint square area. We'll try to go past. We'll be catching you in an hour. Just after commute prices have gone down. Uh, sorry, I'll stop talking about my life. Uh, all right, so first off, we just grab the size of the area we want to paint. And what we do here is we work out sort of the bounds of the chunks that we're going to be using. So. Uh, we divide the size of the area by two because we're working out from the center of the point, so we only need half of value. And then we add two for good measure, just to make sure that we're not missing anything. Uh, so we do that. For, so we do uh, minus in, or taking away from the uh, subtracting, sorry, that's the word, uh, from the x and y indexes and adding to the x and y indexes. And this basically just. Uh, defines an area of chunks we're gonna sort of that we could possibly be painting in based on the size and where the mouse position is, uh, just so we don't have to paint check through all of the chunks. Uh, and next we have a two vex freeze, the top right corner and the bottom left corner. Uh, these are basically to define the two areas of the. Uh, Uh, sorry, we're defining the two corners of the area we are painting. Uh, similarly, if we'd like manually selected them, but well, this time it's based on the mouse and size instead. So we just add the uh, size divided by two here to the mouse and scene, and that gives us our nice square, uh, which we then uh, use when we are cycling through all the chunks. And if the chunk is in range, because if the mouse was hanging towards the end of the grid, edge of the grid, like uh, it's square. So if the mouse was like hanging towards here, it would give us a load of uh, values that were uh, less than zero. So, but as you can see, we don't get no errors, except for that one, which is not mine. I swear. So yeah. So basically, this makes sure that if it makes sure that the uh, the index values are in range before we try and paint it. Uh, there we get the rows of tiles from the Y value. We get the row script, we get the tiles as chunks, and we get to use the X value to get the chunk. Uh, and then we call the paint tiles an area that we had for painting manually defined squares. We call it with the top right corner, the bottom left corner, the current tile, and, oh shit, uh, sorry and false for his blank because we're actually painting it rather than erasing it. Oh, sorry. So yeah, that is how we paint square areas. It's pretty much identical to the painting areas where you define the corners, but you know, it works out. Works fine. Okay, now onto painting circle areas. Uh, very similar principle. We calculate the bounds of the area to make sure we're not searching any more chunks that we have to. Uh, this time we actually get the center tile based on where the mouse actually is. So we just use the default, uh, the Y index instead of these new values we're calculating. And we get basically, we get a tile to sort of, uh, to ensure that, sorry, uh, it's to ensure that the circle is even on all sides. So. So it's not like one key or anything. Uh, then we calculate the top right corner and the bottom left corner. 
no, that we're, we're, you might be saying, oh, we don't need that. We're making a circle. Well, we do because we're defining that within a so we're drawing the circle within a square. But we so we have an additional piece of maths to work out whether the circle tile should be drawn. But this defines sort of the rex in which the circle will be drawn. If that makes sense. Okay, so then we go through all the chunks, and like before, we make a check to make sure that all the values are within range, and we don't get any out of range exceptions. We don't need these lines, so I'll get rid of that to avoid confusion. All right, so we get the row using the y value, we get the chunk out of the row using the x value. And then we call this new method in tile chunk called paint tiles up there, which takes well, two vector frees for the positions, which are the bottom left and top right corners. You know about uh, it takes the prefab of the tile we are trying to paint. It's blank. It takes a ve another vector free, which is the center of the circle, and max distance, which is actually the radius of the uh, circle, which you'll see as size of area divided by two. I probably should have used it. Uh, not. Like, had a whole value, but whatever. Oh well, we'll just keep dividing by two to get the radius. Uh, and what is this uh, paint tiles of here, you ask? Well, basically, it uh, goes through all the tiles in uh, a given chunk. And it calculates two values, which are basically the x coordinates, uh, the position of the tile minus the position. Of the center of the circle, and that value is uh, for both the x and y. No, it's uh, sorry, it's my plus the x minus plus the center of the circle dot x squared, and the same for y. And then if these two values combined are less than the squared radius of the circle, I should, I should probably just, I'm just going to rename refactor that radius. Uh, yeah. So if that if this value of the val one and val two combined is less than the radius squared, then that means the position is within the radius of a circle. So we should paint the tile, and that's what we do. So we get the two x and y coordinates, and we use the set tile to paint it with whatever values we passed in to the method. Okay, I hope that makes sense if you have any question. Uh, this is basically just the equation. And I'll probably zoom in, but whatever. It's in 1080p, just thought the quality. Yeah, so that is the equation for working out whether a any coordinates are in a circle's radius. And finally, we get onto the spray can, which again is identical to the uh, it's identical to the uh, uh, sorry painting square here, except for one key feature is that we are using the spray can paint tiles method, which is a new method in the uh, tile chunk. Yes, uh, which basically generates a random number each time we want to try and paint for each tile. Uh, so that value is between one and a hundred, and that is. Uh, Basically, if this number is more than or equal to the density of the spray can, which has been defined in the level creator here, uh, here, yeah, uh, here, spray can density. So then, if that is too big, or if that is more than it, then uh, it will continue. So it will just skip the current tile. Otherwise, it will paint the tile using this code here, and it makes sure it's within the bounds and whatnot. Uh, you might notice one strange thing is that we've had to specify unity engine dot random dot range. Uh, yeah, I just, that was odd. Um, it uh, it would say basically that there was sort of ambiguity between unity engine dot random and system dot random. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or main ports are wrong or whatever. But by specifying it was unity engine dot random dot range, it sorted it so. It was odd. Yeah. Yeah, but other than that, we just uh, generate a random number, and if this number is low enough, then we paint the tile. Easy peasy. Uh, finally, we got onto the uh, GUI of the thing. 
which is all pretty simple. So if we are on a uh, paint single, and so if paint single is true, then we display all the options for painting circles, or having circle brushes, square brushes, or spray cans. So basically, if you click one button, it will set it to true and set the rest to false. Or it will invert the respective value, so you can switch all of them off at one point if you want. Otherwise, it will set one to true and the rest to false. And now we have... Uh, I don't know if I've actually shown you this before, but I will now. Uh, basically, we have is uh, GUI layout horizontal slider, which is the slider you can see here. It defines it, and we have a little label with that as well, because we are using the spring, uh, yeah, using the begin horizontal and end horizontal, so that makes them appear side by side. Uh, basically, you have a label saying whatever the current uh, spray can density is, and then we are using the slider to set the value of the spray can density. But at the same time, we need to pass that in as a value, so we the horizontal slider displays the correct value. And these two numbers here are sort of like the bottom and top limits of what the value can be from the slider. So our slider for spray can density goes from 1 to 100 because that's the odds of whatever number we are generating. Oh, the random number, the random number, sorry, for painting tiles. And we do a similar thing for brush size. So I've got a label just saying brush size and whatever the brush size is to cast to a string. And again, we are setting the brush size using the horizontal slider. Uh, we have to pass in the we have to pass in the brush size value, and then uh, we have a limit of three and a ceiling of well, a bottom, a floor of three and a ceiling of a hundred. And that is the like size of the brush. And that's pretty much it. That was actually fairly simple this episode. Because I needed something to do quickly while I'm preparing to go on holiday to Munich. So that'll be fun. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just give you a quick demo again. So, let's have some nice blue wooden tiles and paint a circle. Oh, what sort of is a circle? Uh, yeah, okay, that looks good. Let's have some uh, spray. Oops, nope. Click the wrong one. So yeah, let's have some just noise around the edge. And finally, let's switch over to red. And paint some squares. Can I get an actual like two bit grid? Yes. Okay. Alright, um again, we can still save these. So in episode demo. Save time map. Uh, there we go. Um, we're still loading save all time maps, but whatever. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you've got any questions, shove them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, as always, check out Loud or Quiet. I'm still working on Apocalypse Mode. I'll have an update for you. Uh, early September-ish, because I'm on holiday. Uh, from the 1st to the 5th so I won't be doing a tutorial that week but there will be one next week uh, I think I'm doing merging tile maps as like prefabs so that'll be fun that'll be actually a bitch trying to program Fucking hell. Uh, okay so yeah cheers for watching check out all the shit in the links in the description that I've made and goodbye